How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we got two Spoil Kid stories that are so freaking crazy that I know you'll enjoy them. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's just jump right into it. Real quick, I have a super cool announcement. You guys have been asking for these videos to be on Spotify for the longest time, and now I can say that we are officially on Spotify. It's the first link in the description, or you can just look up Connor Pugs, my name, on Spotify and start listening there if you prefer to listen there or just want to listen on the go. Anyways, so we're going to call the subscriber for the first story, Charlie. So anyways, right, Charlie is in class, and there's this kid in Charlie's class who we're going to call the spoiled kid. And he was the spoiled kid because he always got anything that he ever wanted. His parents would always say yes to him. His parents would always say that he's like the greatest guy ever and that he's so smart and that, oh my God, like, wow, Charlie or uh, the spoiled kid is so awesome and everything he does is so great and he's the best guy ever. And the thing is, right, it's good for your parents to be supportive, you know? In fact, I think it's like super important for your parents to be supportive. But there's a difference between being supportive and giving you a massive head and making you think that you can do literally anything when you can't. So the problem was the spoiled kid believed that he was entitled to literally everything. So there is also a girl in this class who we're gonna call Kate. That's like one of the most common names I use in this channel. Uh, deal with it. And anyways, right, Kate was kind of like the the pretty girl in the class. And I don't, I, I don't know, that sounds a little weird for me to say, but like, she was like known as like the one that like all the guys would always like wanted to like be with, right? And the thing was, Charlie, the subscriber, also wanted to be with this girl. And the spoiled kid also wanted to be with this girl, right? There's a bit of a problem because Charlie and the spoiled kid both kind of were, they weren't fighting over the girl necessarily, but it was low-key a competition, right? So Charlie honestly got in more speaking time with her. And the thing is like, so every single day, Charlie would make it a thing that he wanted to go find Kate. And when he went and found Kate, like, you know, he would be like asking her things and they would talk and they would hang out a lot. And honestly, Charlie was putting in the time and shout out to my boy, Charlie. I mean, he got it done, as you'll see. And the spoiled kid wasn't as good at it. But the other thing was the spoiled kid, when he started to talk to Kate, uh, he wasn't saying like, hey, how are you doing? How is life for you? Tell me about yourself. How are classes for you? The spoiled kid was all about me, me, me. The spoiled kid would always talk about how he's going on this super cool vacation, how he just got the super cool new computer or has a really cool watch or how he's super smart and did super well. So while the spoiled kid definitely talked to this girl a lot and I've had a lot of stories on the channel where the spoiled kid you know, he just doesn't talk to the girl and just believes that she's madly in love with him. This time, the spoiled kid, yes, he did talk to the girl quite a bit. However, the problem was, whenever he talked to the girl, he only talked about himself and was basically just bragging to her. And she wasn't a big fan of this. And, you know, it, at the end of the day, she eventually, you know, Charlie and this girl started basically dating. So one day, about a week into Charlie and, and Kate, being in a relationship, right? I mean, it was a middle school relationship, so 10th base was holding hands and scandalous, right? But anyways, right, so the thing is, the spoiled kid didn't know this. The spoiled kid wasn't aware because I guess he just wasn't in the loop socially. Uh, he was too busy flexing, right? Flexing 24-7, no time for friends, only bands, but well, whatever, right? And the spoiled kid didn't know this. So one day, Charlie and uh, Kate were sitting at lunch together. They were basically having like a lunchtime date or something. And the spoiled kid came and sat down and was like, Charlie, can I have a moment with my woman? And Charlie was like, dude, what? Well, I don't understand what you're saying. He's like, I, I would like a moment to woo Miss Kate over here. And Kate just looks at Charlie, and Charlie just looks at Kate, and they're both like, uh, <laughs> um, and, and Charlie's like, hey, are you going to break it to him? Kate's like, no, it's not, uh, she, Kate's like, you know, uh, spoiled kid, um, I, I would love to be friends with you, which was a lie, by the way, I would love to be friends with you, but I just want to let you know that, uh, Charlie and I are actually together, and Kate reaches over the table and basically grabs Charlie's hand as a signal of them being together. And the spoiled kid was like, what? It kind of like, kind of like fell back a little bit and was kind of freaked out. He's like, oh my God, like, no. And he's like, no, 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 this is not true. Stop lying. Stop lying to yourselves. You guys know the truth. This isn't you. This isn't you. No. 
And Kate's like, what do you mean this isn't me? And spoiled kid's like, I know you, Kate. I know you so well. And you know that we were meant to be together. And this is where Kate kind of snaps a little bit. She doesn't, like, go crazy or anything. But, you know, she kind of just says, well, no, you don't know me. Whenever we talk, it's literally just you talking about yourself or flexing or bragging about something, right? Like, that's not us talking, right? That's you talking to me. You don't know anything about me. Like, you know, you seem like you might be a good guy, but how would I even know? Like, you have not shown it off to me. Like, I'm sorry. I'm fine if you want to continue being friends, but I'm with Charlie now. And Charlie felt super awkward and uncomfortable in the situation because he just, like, he knew that the spoiled kid had just been told no. And he just, and he knows that when the spoiled kid is told no, it's, it's about to rain down, you know, fire and brimstone from the sky. It's about to be bad. But the thing is, Charlie didn't expect it to be as bad as this. He did not expect the spoiled kid to basically go off the deep end as hard as he's about to go off the deep end, is what I'm trying to say, right? So anyways, you know, Alex is like, oh, sorry, Charlie. Alex is the name for the next guy. Charlie's kind of, you know, he's continuing to, like, date this girl, and that's one of Charlie's friends comes up to them. And, you know, Charlie and, uh, and Kate are sitting at the table. They're having one of their dates, right? And one of uh, Charlie's friends, you know, comes up to them and says, hey, I just want to let you know, the spoiled kid is like, quote unquote, plotting revenge. I don't totally know what that means, but all I know is that he, he's plotting revenge. And that's what like some of his like affiliates have told me. I don't totally know what that means, but I just thought I'd, I'd let you know. So you got a heads up. And Charlie's like, oh my God. And you know, he's like, Kate, I'm so sorry. I have to deal with this. And Charlie's friends like clarifies that no, no, Charlie, he doesn't care. Like, Kate made her choice. He's plotting revenge against you. And Charlie's like, what? Dude, I was just talking to her. She made a choice. Shouldn't the revenge go against her? And Kate gives him a look like, what? And he's like, I, I didn't mean it like that. Revenge should go against no one. Ha ha ha. But why is the revenge going against me? And, you know, Charlie's friend's like, dude, I really don't know. I, I can't say either way. All I know is that, yeah, the revenge is going against you. I don't know what it is, but just be aware. And uh, Charlie was expecting, I don't know, the spoiled kid to come in and try and, like, trip him or something or, I don't know, sabotage one of his school projects. He was not expecting the spoiled kid to break into his house, right? So anyways, this was the weekend. It was a Friday night. And they all lived in, like, the same neighborhood. They all went to, like, a school in their local district. And for some reason, everyone's address was put in the uh, school directory, like if you wanted to send them mail or something. This was true for me for a while, but thankfully they got rid of that. I actually went into my own college address thing and removed it because I'm like, oh, dude, oh, come on now. Like, let's not expose everyone here. It's so unnecessary. Why do you need to know my address, bro? But anyways, so Charlie's just chilling. It's getting late at night. It's about like nine or so. And, you know, his parents are like, hey, Charlie, it's about time for you to wrap it up or whatever. And uh, that's when they hear kind of like a noise. They hear like a noise and they're just like, uh, what was that? And so they walk downstairs and Charlie is so surprised by what he sees. He sees the spoiled kid standing there. And Charlie's parents turn to him and be like, Charlie, like, you're supposed to let us know when you're having a friend over. And Charlie turns to them and be like, I don't have a friend over. This is some random kid from my class. Like, I, what is he? What, what are you doing here? And the spoiled kid's like, oh, I just got lost on my way back home. And Charlie's parents turn to each other and like, what? Like, that's really, really confusing. So Charlie's parents, you know, look at the spoiled kid and say, hey, what's your mom's phone number? I'll just tell her you're here and you need help picking, getting, like, picked up. And the spoiled kid's like, no, 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 I can walk back. I'm very close. And they're like, are you sure? Like, I don't know. Like, Charlie's parents were like, I don't know if I feel comfortable just letting you walk back by yourself. That sounds, like, really dangerous. Are you sure that's all right? He's like, yes, yes, that's totally fine. So he walks back, and Charlie, like, goes to bed, and he feels re really weird. The next day comes around, and, you know, Charlie's friend's like, dude, comes up to him, and Charlie's like, yeah? He's like, bro, like, I need to talk to you. And Charlie's like, is it about the fact that the spoiled kid just spawned into my house yesterday? And he's like, yeah, like, th that kid went into your house and was trying to find dirt on you. He's like, what? He's like, yeah, and he's going to do it again. Charlie's like, wait, 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 hold up. So you're saying the spoiled kid broke into my house to try and find dirt on me. And he's like, yeah, I think like he's looking for like a diary or like a secret list of evil doings or something. I don't know, man. And Charlie's like, so he broke into my house to look for dirt on me and he's going to do it again. 
And, uh, you know, Charlie's like, yeah. Or Charlie's friend's like, yeah, I don't know how to say it. And Ava's like, dude, like, I'm, or Kate's like, dude, I'm so sorry. I, I like, I, I knew this kid was weird. Maybe I should have left him off nice, like more nicely. I don't know. And Charlie's like, okay, this is not your problem. This is not your fault. Also, this is me. This kid's being ridiculous. I'm going to deal with it. Don't even worry about it. And, you know, it's a pretty nice thing to do, I'm not going to lie. And uh, so, sure enough, Charlie goes back home, and he tells his parents exactly what happened. And his parents are like, wow, that, that's, that's crazy. Like, what? Like, are you serious? And he's like, I wish I wasn't serious, Mom. But, yes, this is the situation we're in right now. I, 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 I don't know how else to say it. This is what we're dealing with. And so, anyways, his parents kind of, like, wait out, and they're basically staking out the spoiled kid, waiting for him to show up. And his parents are like, I feel really weird doing this. And, uh, you know, Charlie's like, okay, all we got to do is leave out bait. So they basically left the back door open and Charlie left a book. And on, it was like a notebook. And he let, and like, he wrote in Sharpie on the notebook, Charlie's diary <laughs> in big black marker. Like you would have thought this is the most obvious bait ever. And uh, so anyways, right, they're waiting around and Charlie's parents were like, we need to go to bed. We have work tomorrow or whatever, right? And uh, sure enough, right, as they're saying that, the, someone sneaks through the back door and tiptoes in. And it is the spoiled kid. And uh, so at this point, Charlie, like, takes out his phone and starts recording. And the spoiled kid looks around. He looks on the table. He picks up something. And he reads it. He's like, has this big smile expression on his face. And he turns around. And he's about to tiptoe out the door when Charlie says, wait one second. The spoiled kid turns around, and it's Charlie and his parents looking at him, holding Charlie's diary. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. I'm going to try, to I'm gonna try and heart a bunch of these comments. And also, if you want to continue supporting the channel, all you got to do is continue watching videos after this one. And let me know in the comment section what you're doing while watching these videos. Are you, like, watching them as they are? Are you putting them to the side and, like, playing a video game, cleaning your house, drawing something, trying to go to bed? Genuinely curious, and I like reading through the comments. And also remember, if you want to buy any energy drinks, go to Gamersups and use code CONNORPUGS for 10% off. And not only gives you 10% off, but also supports me. And if enough of us use the code, we might actually be able to make our own cup, which I think is really cool. Anyways, right, so at this point... Charlie and his parents had the spoiled kid caught. And the spoiled kid is like, oh, hi, guys. I'm sorry. I got lost again. And at this point, Charlie's parents are like, we're not buying it this time. The spoiled kid has this crazy look in his face like, oh, my God, I just got caught type look. And so sure enough, right, the spoiled kid is like, ah, ha, 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 what do you mean? And Charlie's like, look, dude, that's a fake diary in your hands. I, we literally made it to bait you because I was told by one of my friends that you were going to come here tonight to look for something to like some kind of like dirt on me to try and quote unquote expose me or something. The spoiled kid's like, fine. So what if I did, you know, you stole my girlfriend from me. And Charlie's like, bro, she was never dating you. And she didn't really have any plans on dating you. And you guys never asked her out. You can't just look at a girl and say, that's my girlfriend now. That's, bro, this is not, that's just simply not how it works, you know? And Charlie's parents are like, son, like, let's just call your parents. Like, eh, just get out of here. It's like, it's time for you to go. The spoiled kid's like, well, you can't prove anything. I'm just going to say you guys are a bunch of liars. And Charlie's like, yeah, also, I have not been, I've not stopped recording since you walked in and took my diary and admitted everything. And sure enough, Charlie had his hand, his phone wasn't very clearly recording, but Charlie was recording the whole thing kind of secretly. And Spoiled Kid's like, well, well, Charlie, you're mean for stealing my girlfriend. And Charlie's like, dude, okay, come on now. Let's, let's just go home. So sure enough, right, Charlie was able to find in the directory because the Spoiled Kid found his address in the directory, but Charlie was able to find the Spoiled Kid's parents' numbers and they called his mom up and the Spoiled Kid's mom came over and was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm going to have a talk with my son when we get back home. And the next day comes around and the Spoiled Kid, you know, a Charlie is sitting with a, uh, yes, with Kate, and, you know, they're talking about how crazy things have been. And, you know, ch you know Charlie and Kate continue to have a pretty good relationship. And uh, the spoiled kid never bothers them again. So into the second spoiled kid story, this one is even crazier, so you definitely want to stick around. Let's call the subscriber who submitted this one Alex. So anyways, Alex was in school, and there's this kid in school who was kind of like 
not like the bad kid, but he was always getting in trouble, right? And there was kind of rumors that he was doing some really bad stuff behind the scenes that like the police were going to get involved. So like pretty serious, pretty bad stuff. But no one really knew for sure. This kid would always come in late and the teacher would be like, you're late again. Like, I'm going to mark you down for that. And he'd be like, whatever. Sit at the back of the class, be on his phone, blow like bubble gum bubbles and pop them loudly in class. Just like he just, you know, obviously didn't want to be there. Was probably going to try and drop out as soon as he could. But he was just still in class, right? So anyways... One day, you know, uh, you know, they hear a rumor that like he, this, this kid really went too far this day and that he really messed up. And, you know, Alex was kind of like, oh, well, why is this going to be true? Specifically, I always hear that this kid's like messing up. Like, why is today anything different? So the kid comes in and he's noticeably like kind of messed up. Like he's noticeably nervous. He's kind of like, he came in on time, no attitude, He's normally like very nonchalant, like I don't want to be here type business, right? But no, today was different. He came in and he very quietly and quickly ran to the back of the classroom. He sat down and kind of like put his hoodie down and just looked straight down. So immediately Alex was like, all right, well, maybe something is different today. This kid is acting much stranger today. So maybe something is different. I don't really know, but maybe that's the case, right? And, uh, you know, sure enough, uh, they hear, like, a couple, like, I'd say a little bit of time goes by, and that's when a mom bursts in, and she's like, you, and points at the back of the class to the, I, I maybe spoiled kid, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe just, we're gonna call him the bad kid in this sense, and, you know, he's not a bad kid, he just got mixed up with the wrong crowd or something, but he point, they point at the bad kid, or the sus kid, or whatever, and the mom's like, you, you really went too far this time, and you know what? It's catching up to you. All your mistakes, they're catching up to you, and this time, like, you know, you're coming with me, and we're going to have a talk about this. And there's, in the kind of like the bad kid gets up, he's like, no, we're not. And at this point, bro, remember, we're in the middle of freaking English class. The teacher's kind of just like, bro, what's going on? And everyone in class is kind of just like, eh, what? What? <laughs> What's going on, man? I'm just trying to learn some grammar. I'm just trying to figure out which is the right your to use, man. Please. So that mom starts going to the bad kid. It's like, you? You're coming with me. And the bad kid is like, I don't freaking think so. And he grabs his chair. He legitimately throws his chair at his own mom. It is one of the craziest things ever. His mom, thankfully, ducks or dodges or somehow... And then the kid starts running, right? The kid starts running, and, like, at this point, everyone's like, oh, my God, the kid just, like, threw a chair at his mom. That's insane. And sure enough, right, you know, everyone's like, oh, my God. And, and the teacher, you know, kind of, like, mans up a little bit and steps in his way, kind of blocks him from leaving. And that's just enough time for the cops that were already after him to come in. They literally take this kid and drag him out of the classroom. So at this point, everybody's kind of just like, Oh my God, like, what is happening? Like, uh, well, what's serious? like, seriously, what is going on right now? And the teacher's like, class, remain calm and in your seats. Nobody move, right? Nobody move. And, the, and there's two police officers dragging this kid out of the classroom. And his mom is huffing and puffing and yelling at him, which, you know, I think is pretty justified. I mean, he just tried to throw a chair at her. You can't do that to your mom. I mean, don't throw a chair at anyone. This isn't WWE. Like, come on now. And sure enough, like, the mom is yelling at him, like, oh, my God. Like, I can't believe you did that. Yada, like, stuff like that. Like, uh, you're the worst. All that kind of stuff, right? And, you know, he's like, I'm like, I like, you know, you didn't raise me right I'll, as the police are dragging him out. Right. And here's the funniest thing ever. Here's the craziest thing ever. So the class kind of ignores the teacher a little bit, kind of ignores the teacher and decides to, OK, well, the teacher said we should stay in our chairs, but we really want to see what's going on here. So they all kind of get up in the cl and the teacher's like, class, no, 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 sit down. You're not getting up. You need to sit down right now. But they don't care. They all kind of get up and they watch. And as this kid is being dragged out, he, like, pulls out his phone and starts making a freaking TikTok, dude. Like, some of them followed him on TikTok, but later in the day, they saw this TikTok on their For You page. It got a little viral. It got, like, a thousand likes or something. So it blew up a little bit. And they all are just watching as this kid is being dragged out by legitimate 
police officers, and he's just doing the renegade dance. Okay, he's maybe not doing the renegade. He's not like renegade. Ren no, no. Okay, maybe not. But he's making a TikTok as he's being pulled out by these two officers, being dragged out. His mom is yelling at him, and he's like, "Oh, you know what? This sounds like a great time to make a TikTok, guys." I'm going to make a TikTok right now. You know what? With all the things going on in my life, I think this is the greatest time for me to make a TikTok. Bro, are you serious, dude? Yep, but sure enough, kid continues to make a TikTok and is pulled out into a van and is taken away. And all the kids are like, oh my God, oh my God, what is going on? And the teacher's like, kids, like, get back to class right now, or you're all getting a bad mark, and I'm sending it to the principal, and all the kids are not listening, because they're like, okay, yeah, right up the entire class, you just had a crazy experience happen, we're just gonna say, we're traumatized or something, like, we're still, and they watch as the van drives away, and it's the craziest thing ever, next day comes around, all the kids are sitting at, like, their kind of, like, lunchtime cafeteria type place, and the subscriber, Alex, is talking with his friends, like, dude, do you think that kid's gonna get expelled, is he gonna go to juvie, and they were really just trying to figure out what this kid did to get him in so much trouble that the police burst into the classroom to drag him out into a van. Like, it is the most ridiculous thing ever. I mean, this kid was definitely doing some sus stuff if he was, like, if he was in the mindset where he was willing to throw a chair at his mom to escape her. What? His mom came in saying, like, oh, I need to talk to you. And he's like, oh, you need to talk to me? Uh, take this, chair attack, throws the chair, tries to run away. I mean, I guess shout out to the teacher for blocking him out of the exit long enough that the police were able to come in and get him. But all the kids were wondering, like, oh my god, like, what's up with this kid? And then eventually Ward got out that, you know, the kid was not expelled, he was not thrown into juvie or anything, he only got two weeks, he was only suspended for two weeks, which... Two week suspension is pretty crazy at the end of, at the end of the day. However, I mean, one would have thought with like two weeks, this is like with whatever just happened, it would have been like, I don't know, thrown or like sent away to like Guantanamo Bay or something crazy. But no, 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 two week suspension. However, from this point on, Alex and his friends didn't really see this kid even after he came back after two weeks because he was put immediately into special classes for kids who like misbehave like that, which I mean. They probably just assumed, like, okay, this kid threw a chair at his mom. What if, like, he gets, like, a snarky remark from one of his classmates? He's like, I didn't find that joke very funny. Chair attack. Like, we can't risk that, right? That can't be risked. So anyways, yeah, the kid, you know, he didn't really appear again. And even in lunch, he wasn't allowed in the normal lunchroom. He wasn't allowed in the normal classrooms. So why he, while he wasn't expelled from the school, he basically had to go to, like, a ghost version of the school where it's like secretive classes, secretive lunch. So he wasn't officially expelled, but he was, for the sake of his social life, he was practically expelled. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Watch another video if you want to click on the, the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it.